In this clinical case, there is a large restoration to be carried out on the lateral incisor. You can see that there is an old composite filling to be changed. A material with different opacities has been chosen, Ceramics Duo Nano Ceramic Restorative from Dent Supply. Using the classical Vita Shade Guide, on which we have put the Ceramics Eye Shade label, the shade is selected. Shade A2 seems correct, even if a little too saturated. As for shade A1, this seems rather pale. We seem to be on the boundary between the two shades. If the shade is chosen with the composite shade guide from the ceramics kit, we are confronted with exactly the same phenomenon. D2 seems a little too saturated for the dentine, and D1 seems a little too pale. Turning to the enamel, if there is any difficulty in seeing the match, a black and white photo can always be taken to show that E1 provides the best match. The next step is to make the silicone key. In this case, it can be made directly in the mouth, as the anatomy of the lingual face of this lateral incisor is correct. Here is the key. Only the lingual part would be retained to form the wall. Once the rubber dam has been placed, the old restoration is removed. We can also see that the restoration on the central incisor will need retouching. The old restoration is removed with a diamond ball burr, with spray of course, starting with the bulk of the lateral incisor. The old restoration on the distal part of the central incisor can also be removed. A fine diamond burr is then used to work a little closer to the lingual face, still with a generous spray and likewise on the central incisor. You can see the extent of the old restoration on the lateral incisor. The small labial composite repair is removed ultrasonically. There is now a decision to be made about the extent of this restoration on the vestibular face. Should the preparation completely surround the old composite on the vestibular face? We think this is the only way to avoid a visible line between the two restorations. A long frontal bevel is therefore made, going beyond the old composite. On the central incisor, a small distal bevel is realised with the aid of a metal abrasive strip. Having completed the preparatory work, we can turn to the adhesive procedure. Here we are using Xeno 3, a self-etching adhesive. After shaking the bottles to mix the monomers and the solvents, we take a drop from each bottle. The two drops are then mixed to give one material with which the hybrid layer is made in a single step. This adhesive is self-etching, enabling it to form a mechanical and adhesive bond with the substrate, leading to the formation of a hybrid layer. The adhesive is placed on the tooth and allowed to penetrate for 20 seconds. A gentle air blow eliminates excessive adhesive and we can now proceed to the light curing with the Smart Light PS LED lamp. For the stratification, Ceramex Duo provides the choice of two materials with different translucencies. The first is a dentine replacement material, in this case D2, in the green compule. The other is the enamel replacement material, blue compules marked with E1 and E2. We start with a dentine replacement for the central incisor. Here the key is of no real interest, given that the lingual or palatal face of the tooth is still present. The Ceramex Geo is applied with a certain amount of pressure and this dentine replacement layer is then polymerised. There is still a little material missing. A little more Ceramex Geo is applied, but leaving space for the enamel material which is E1 for the central incisor. The material is applied and you can see that it does not stick to the spatula, making the placement very easy. This enamel layer is then polymerised. The stratification of the central incisor is now completed. 
To get rid of excess in the cervical region, a diamond burr and a metal abrasive strip are used. A small scraper can also be used to clear excess from the cervical region. As you can see, it's impossible to see the restoration on this middle incisor. We can now deal with the lateral incisor. In view of the amount of material required for the restoration of this tooth, the silicone key will of course have to be used. The dentine replacement material will be placed on this key, but the adhesive procedure must first be performed. The hybrid layer is once again prepared with Xeno 3. The material is applied generously and left to penetrate for 20 seconds. A brief blast of air removes any excess, especially solvent, and polymerizes the adhesive. The dentine replacement, here Ceramex Duo D2, is placed on the silicone key. Here too we observed that the Ceramex Duo does not stick at all to the spatula and is very easily applied to the key. The key is placed in the mouth and the material applied taking care to remove any excess that sticks to the central incisor by passing the spatula between the two teeth. The material can be reshaped from the vestibular face and is then polymerised. First from this side and then after removing the key from the lingual side. We have now built up our lingual wall. We can now move straight on to building up the vestibular transition line with enamel replacement material. The material is placed along this mesial transition line with the enamel replacement material E2. Of course, we put a matrix band to avoid sticking to the adjacent tooth and a wooden wedge to separate the two teeth. We now turn to the bulk of dentine replacement and using D2, as for the lingual wall, we work up towards the vestibular surface. Moderate pressure is applied to each layer to eliminate bubbles and each layer of material is polymerised with the Smartlight PS LED curing light. We now come to the surface layers where the E2 enamel replacement material can be used to make up the front face in a single operation. We work right up to the transition line with this material so that the surface material is more translucent, making this restoration a perfect imitation of the natural substance. We polymerise this layer and all that is now missing is a little material along the mesial transition line. We add it using this time the Elberth separating device to give a good separation between the teeth and a clear view of the area. This additional material is polymerised. It remains to build up the area of the free edge a little. At this stage, before polishing, it can already be seen that our composite restoration blends in very well with the rest of the tooth. Polishing begins with red ring diamond burrs, followed by the enhanced kit. Starting with the enhanced finishing points and the Prisma Gloss Regular Paste, and going on with the enhanced finishing cups with the Prisma Gloss Extra Fine Paste to polish the material. The application of too much pressure is, of course, avoided in order not to heat the teeth. It remains to polish the proximal and cervical areas. Here, very fine metal bands enable remaining excesses to be removed. In the lingual view, we can see that the stratification imitates the dental anatomy well and reproduces the colour effects of the natural tooth. Once the operative area is cleared, it remains to check the filling and remove any excess. 
Here, you see that thanks to the key and the build-up of the lingual wall, there is only little excess of composite, and here is the result just after the removal of the rubber dam. Once again, we see that with a simple stratification of Ceramex Duo, a satisfactory aesthetic result is obtained.